Thank you, Jen. Good morning, everyone. I'm not expecting anyone else today, so uh, I think we'll just go ahead and kick it off. Good morning, and thanks for tuning in to learn how to save time and money with Scalable Analytics from Rockwell Automation. Uh, my name is Troy Menino, and I'm the Process Automation Specialist at Turtle & Hughes. If you have any questions during the presentation, please feel free to ask. Uh, we should also have some time at the end for questions and additional discussion. Here's the agenda for today's webinar. I will first give a brief introduction to Scalable Analytics uh, and then talk about three relatively new analytics products from Rockwell, Shelby, Team One, and Logix AI. Finally, we will cover some additional resources and where to find more information. The business outcomes that analytics aim to achieve are faster time to market, lower total cost of ownership, improved asset utilization, and enterprise risk management. Uh, additionally, your downtime is very expensive. So all the products that we will talk about today focus on reducing mean time to repair. They're about keeping your facility running smoother for longer. This chart is helpful in describing the type of analytical data that you may want at any level of your manufacturing operation, either the device, system, or enterprise level. Across the top of this chart are four basic categories of analytical data. And here's what's important. Descriptive information tells you what is happening now. Diagnostic information tells you why something is happening. Predictive information tells you what is about to happen. And prescriptive information tells you what to do about it. So Shelby and Team One will fall in the descriptive and diagnostic categories at the device level, where your primary concern is reliability. Logix AI is a predictive tool uh, that could alert you to potential changes in quality on a manufacturing line or if a fault could happen soon. Now let's hop into Factory Talk Analytics for Devices, or Shelby for short. Here's a picture of the Shelby appliance, which is designed for device discovery and fault detection. I want to point out that all that's needed to operate Shelby is a 24 volt DC power source and a connection to your ethernet network with connected devices like drives, controllers, and managed switches, just to name a few. There are two ethernet ports on the appliance, so you can connect to two different subnets. Again, here's where Shelby falls on our scalable analytics chart. It provides descriptive and diagnostic information at the device level. So Shelby is a self-contained, ready-to-use appliance that works automatically on industrial networks. So what does it actually do? Well, through a variety of discovery strategies, Shelby finds Rockwell Automation intelligent assets, your drives, controllers, switches, etc and returns useful descriptive and diagnostic information in self-configured meaningful dashboards uh, that can be viewed from any web browser on your network. The appliance needs power and an ethernet connection and then setup is simple. Just a few questions get you started, like what language do you speak, what time zone are you in, and how will the appliance get an IP address? Uh, once on the network, Shelby does the rest, um, and a single Shelby appliance can detect up to 100 devices of your choosing on your network. I want to give you a feel for how simple Shelby is to set up. So here are a few screenshots uh, that appear once the appliance is powered up and connected to the network. Step one is simply to name your appliance. Here we'll name this one Shelby 1. Step two, tell it the date time and time zone. Step three is when you decide whether the appliance has internet access. Uh, this is the recommended way to receive product updates, which do occur multiple times per year. Uh, there is a manual option for updates, however, if you don't want internet access. 
Step four of the setup process is where you determine how your appliance will get an IP address, either through DHCP or a manually assigned static IP address. Step five is securing your appliance, either using a factory talk directory service or by setting an administrator password. Step six, your appliance will restart uh, and then the user interface will automatically launch at this point. <clears throat> so now let's walk through the user interface to see what type of information Shelby can tell us. Again, this user interface can be accessed by any web browser on the network, and there can be up to eight people logged in at any time. There are three main tabs or views at the top of the screen. Uh, you can see titled System Feed, Explorer, and Action Deck. For now, we will focus on the Explorer and Action Deck views. So let's start with the Explorer view. On the left-hand side of the computer monitor shown here, there is an automatically generated list of devices on our network. Things like drives, controllers, I.O. modules, communications adapters, and power monitors, among other things. Uh, and each of these devices has a health status, something like healthy, maintenance required, or faulted, among others. Each device also has a profile depth indicator, seen as those four little gray bars. The devices shown here have either one or two gray bars out of four highlighted. This is simply an indication of how much data Shelby can provide about any given device. And any Ethernet IP device will show healthy or faulted. Uh, but for many of Rockwell's intelligent assets, you get more in-depth analysis. The Line 1 conveyor drive that is selected in blue uh, has two gray bars indicating that it will provide a dashboard of information as seen on the right side of the computer monitor. Like the dashboard in your car, you can uh, quickly look here and know if there is something lurking in your operation. The circular gauges provide descriptive information about the drive, like temperature and output parameters, things relevant to a drive. There is also a graphical representation of these in which the individual parameters can be toggled on and off. Additionally, notice the diagnostic information shown just above the graph. This particular PowerFlex 755 uh, has a maintenance required health status. And the reason that it has that health status is listed here. The motor bearing life has reached its programmed limit. This is something that you would have set in the initial configuration of that drive. Shelby is able to reach out over the network and acquire that information from the drive and then present it to you here. You are able to easily filter the Explorer view, which is particularly useful in troubleshooting situations. Perhaps your manufacturing line goes down and you need to quickly identify whether you have a process issue or a device issue. Uh, so you could filter for any devices that are faulted or failed and pinpoint what could have brought you down. Maybe you have a number of drives in series. This is a way to quickly determine which of those caused the downtime and must be reset. Here's just an example of the dashboard shown for a compact Logix controller, where you see parameters relevant to a controller, like free I.O. memory and CPU. Now let's check out the Action Deck view of the appliance. Anytime a device changes health status, for instance, a drive changing from healthy to needs maintenance, uh, an action card is created. These are the things that Shelby believes you may want to take action on. So if a particular action card is important to you, simply give it a thumbs up. If something is not relevant, like if you work in area one and you are receiving area two action cards, just select the thumbs down icon. And over time, Shelby learns what is most important to you and will show you that first. You may also filter the action deck, perhaps to see all of the devices with a need maintenance health status. Uh, another way to accomplish this would be to simply use the Shelby chat bot 
shown in the very lower left hand side of the computer monitor where you see the words ask Shelby. You can ask Shelby a variety of questions including which devices need maintenance or how many drives are online and Shelby is smart enough to provide an answer. You can access the control panel within Shelby by clicking the gear icon in the upper right hand corner of the computer monitor. And here you will need to log in using the credentials that we created during the setup process. So now you have access to the appliance configuration options where you can reboot, shut down, or factory reset your appliance. Uh, also within the options on the left hand side here, you may modify the device detection preferences. Perhaps you want to detect devices within a range of IP addresses or individually select which IP addresses to include. Um, here you can also perform manual updates and configure the two Ethernet ports into varying types of network architectures. You can give your devices meaningful names using device aliases. And then finally, now within the appliance configuration options, you may enable push notifications on your mobile device using the Team One application. So this allows information from your Shelby appliance, like those action cards, um, or like a drive faulting, to pop up as an alert on your phone. Here's a slide just illustrating those push notifications. So within the Team One mobile application, you can connect to a Shelby appliance and then receive those action cards as alerts to your phone. Okay, to wrap up factory talk analytics for devices, here's what to remember. If you have Ethernet IP networks with connected devices, then a Shelby appliance can immediately provide some analytical value and give you real-time access to descriptive and diagnostic information regarding your devices. I should note that Shelby is a subscription. So in the first year, you purchase the appliance and the first year's subscription fee. Uh, and then each year after that, you own the appliance, so you only pay to continue the subscription portion. So it can be purchased from the Rockwell Automation e-commerce portal, for which I will provide the link at the end of the webinar. The next product we will cover is Factory Talk Team One, uh, which is Rockwell's application for mobility and collaboration. So there is a free and standard version. If you do not already have the free version, I highly recommend that you take the time to visit the Google Play Store or Apple App Store uh, and download Factory Talk Team One. Log in using your Rockwell Knowledge Base credentials. And then the goal of the app, again, is to reduce mean time to repair since your downtime is expensive. Uh, Rockwell is continually adding functionality to the app. Uh, multiple updates are released each year. Here are some of the product highlights. The app allows you to connect to your automation devices via a wireless signal and monitor tags, collect system health data, document incidents, uh, collaborate and troubleshoot with team members, and even receive notifications from factory talk alarms and events and from Shelby, as you already saw. The full functionality of the app, uh, importantly, requires a wireless connection to your plant floor devices and internet access. If you do not already have a wireless access point at your plant, which we often see, then Turtle & Hughes does sell cost-effective, reliable solutions for this. So step one is to download the Factory Talk Team One app on your phone or tablet, and then log in with your knowledge base credentials. Then create a team or simply select a team that you have already been invited to join. You can be a member of multiple teams and segregate your teams however you like, perhaps by team, uh, by shift or project group. The standard version of the app allows you to easily switch between teams without logging out of the app. The next step is to connect your SIP devices. Within the Team One app, 
there are a number of modules uh, indicated by the gray and black octagonal symbols. So use the connect module to link to your devices by simply entering an IP address and giving a meaningful name like line one conveyor drive. While there is no set limit to how many devices you can connect to, it's recommended to only connect to devices critical to operation. It is possible to navigate to devices uh, via the control logics backplane using standard SIP URL addressing. Uh, perhaps you have a series of drives on a private network without wireless access uh, wired to an Ethernet module in the control logics backplane. Those drives can be added to your Team 1 system. Similar to the Shelby appliance, the Team 1 app delivers device health status information through the device status module. If your devices are online and working, then you will see a green good with a check mark. During a downtime event, you can come to this listing of your devices and quickly check for faults. Very helpful during troubleshooting. You may also use the monitor module to track an unlimited number of PLC tag values in real time. This is a relatively new feature added with one of the most recent release packs. Using the trend module, uh, you may trend up to five parameters or controller tag values simultaneously, uh, which is particularly useful for troubleshooting. Here you see four different drive parameters on the same graph, DC bus volts, DC bus memory, max voltage, uh, and one more. So within the standard version of the app, you can connect to Factory Talk alarms and event servers from one or more applications. Uh, so all three alarm sources are actually supported. Those are Logix instruction-based alarms, Logix tag-based alarms, and Factory Talk alarm and event server tag-based alarms. So alarms can be filtered by priority, state, uh, or application. And then finally, you can share those alarms with your teammates to help document problems or troubleshoot. The standard version of the app allows for those alarm notifications to be pushed to your mobile device because who does not want to get alarm notifications in the middle of the night, right? The Team 1 uh, alarm connector requires Factory Talk Alarm and Events 2.7 or greater, uh, which was released with Factory Talk View SE version 8, just for reference. Again, <clears throat> if you are using a Shelby appliance on your controls network, the Action Deck module will allow you to access action cards in real time. So remember that those are generated by Shelby anytime the health status of one of your devices changes. The standard version of Team 1 also allows for push notifications for that device health data coming from Shelby. Use the incident module to document issues or downtime events and their resolutions. So let's say you have a downtime event. You first create an incident and give it a title, like line one downtime event. Uh, then provide a description of the issue. You can associate relevant devices like drives or controllers and attach pictures. And then when the issue is resolved, you simply mark the incident as such and provide a description of the resolution. So the incident report can then be exported as a PDF and shared via text or email. Now, when the same downtime event occurs on the night shift two weeks later with a junior operator, there will be an archived resolution for them to refer to. Uh, and this way you can capture the tribal knowledge that often gets lost and relearned the hard way, uh, saving you time and money. The chat and team board modules within Team 1 allow for collaboration amongst the team. You can chat one-on-one -on -one with teammates or post relevant incident reports to the team board. The Rockwell Automation Knowledge Base may also be accessed directly from the Team 1 app. 
in my opinion, this alone makes it worth your time to download the free version of the app. There have been times at customer sites when I'm looking at an HMI with an unknown error code uh, and a quick knowledge base search provides an answer. You can send certain information from other modules to your favorites module, like knowledge base articles, trends, and URLs, perhaps from your factory talk viewpoint servers or asset center mobile or the batch mobile view. Here's a nice breakdown of the features included with the free version of Team One uh, versus the standard edition. So the primary features not included with the free version of the app are quick switching between teams, sharing those Shelby action cards, the alarms module, and push notifications. Uh, the standard version of the app is a subscription that is priced uh, per user per year and may also be purchased from the Rockwell e-commerce site. So again, before we move on, I want to encourage you to go to the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store and download at least the free version of Factory Talk Team One. Now, for the final topic today, Factory Talk Analyt Analytics Logics AI. So Logics AI is a new predictive analytics tool from Rockwell that works at the device and system level where your primary concerns are reliability and quality. So generally speaking, there are two approaches to advanced analytics, expert-driven analysis and automated data analysis, where Logics AI fits in. While the expert-driven analysis may often be more powerful and flexible, it relies heavily upon human expertise. Uh, whereas an automation or an automated system based on physics-based modeling is repeatable and cost-effective. Uh, there's no data scientists needed. That is the beauty of Logics AI. So Logics AI automatically models and monitors for you. You configure the module, identify important data, and determine what to do next. Like Shelby, the setup is designed to be as simple as possible. You plug in the unit, answer some questions, and you're started. However, uh, while Shelby works against data on the network, Logix AI works against data within a controller uh, because it benefits from that high-speed communications over the backplane. It can compute faster than remote or cloud-based algorithms. There is currently some integration work necessary to implement or respond to Logix AI's predictions. Um, over time, however, this will become more seamless. Let's talk about how Logix AI actually works. So the product is targeted towards controls engineers, someone who knows their application but does not need to be a data scientist. So start by identifying the output tag that matters for the thing you're trying to predict. This could be a measurement of quality, uh, scrap, throughput, or flow, just to name a few. So it's up to the user to choose the, the value that matters for the prediction that they want to build. Next, the user selects the other tags in the controller that may be related. And here, a wide net can be cast. In other words, pick anything that you think might be involved. Logix AI does its own data cleansing, uh, eliminating points that aren't correlated to the output you care about. It will also tell you if there is insufficient data to build a reliable prediction. Once you identify the outputs and inputs, Logix AI watches the running operation and trains itself unsupervised, observing the data streaming through the controller as it runs. Uh, so during this process, the module is finding correlations, thinning the data, and it starts building a model. The actual predictive model building process is fully automatic. So Logix AI rapidly formulates theories of potential mathematical models of your observed operation. 
and then it tests each of those theories until it is confident it has selected the best possible physics-based model. Okay, the training time varies to accomplish this uh, depending on the complexity of the operation. But in a simple process unit, 20 to 25 minutes of unattended training is common. Um, once Logix AI is ready to, be to begin predicting, uh, it actually triggers a bit in the controller to indicate this. The module knows uh, if it has enough data to accurately predict. If it doesn't, it will tell you. Once your prediction is built, a UDT or user-defined data type is made available that once imported into the controller will be updated by the model with its predictions. If you're ready to test the model, you can monitor a bit in the control program to determine when the problem is predicted. So how you respond is up to you. You could wire that bit up to a factory talk alarm and event. You could add it to an HMI display or monitor that value in some external maintenance system. There are essentially two modes of operation for Logix AI, anomaly detection and soft sensing. Anomaly detection is when Logix AI creates a model of normal operation and then tries to detect anomalies. For example, uh, the module can help operators spot performance deviations in equipment like mixers that could affect product quality or lead to downtime. Soft sensing is when Logix AI creates a model using existing data in order to estimate another value. For example, if you need to predict the humidity uh, of a packaged food product, rather than an operator taking a manual reading, which may be difficult, uh, the module can analyze variables from line assets like sprayers or dryers and burners to predict a measurement virtually. Finally, to wrap up Logix AI, here are some technical considerations when implementing it. Remember, a data scientist is not needed, okay, but someone who understands your process and automation controls is. So Logix AI fits into a control Logix chassis. So right now, only use a single L7 or L8 controller with the Logix AI module. Uh, currently, all of the data used by Logix AI for a prediction must come from a single application code file. Also, if using the soft sensing mode to estimate some value using existing data, you have to think about where that existing data is going to come from. One potential source is a data historian. So like Shelby and Team One, uh, Logix AI is a subscription that can be purchased from the Rockwell e-commerce website. The first year you purchase the module and the first year subscription fee, and then every year following you only pay to maintain the subscription portion. So on that note, here is the website where you can purchase any of these products, commerce.rockwellautomation.com. So also for more information, or if you would like a copy of this presentation or to schedule a demo, uh, please email me at troy.manino at turtle.com. So with that, I will say thank you for attending and open it up for any questions that you may have. Anything at all. Hey, Jimmy, may I speak to Adam Priest, sir? Okay, if there are no questions right now, then thank you everyone for attending. Uh, feel free to log off. I will stick around in case anybody has any additional questions. Thanks a lot, guys. Thank you, Troy. That was very informative. Thank you. Thanks, Troy. Thanks, Jim.